Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan Silva here to help you working with Microsoft's Power Automate once again. This time what we're going to do is take a look at how we can generate an email recipient list coming from any type of data source that we have, so maybe a column that is just listing a bunch of different email addresses that we want to put together to send out one single email to all of those individuals all at the very same time. So without further ado, we're going to jump into our data source, take a look at our table that we have with all of our data stored in, and then go ahead and get building straight from there. All right, so here you have a SharePoint list that I'm using as my data source here today. We can make this an Excel file, it could be a Dataverse table, it could be a table stored, uh, pretty much wherever you have it, SQL, somewhere else, that you have some information regarding users and individuals that you would like to send an email out to. You can see here I have a column that's just listed as email, and what I'd like to do is capture all of those email addresses and to be able to use those in email that I'm generating here with Power Automate. Currently right now, if I wanted to send an email out and apply to each is gonna be added in for each of these users because I have multiple users, therefore each user gets their own email every single time. But what if you want everybody on the same thread, everybody getting the same email either in the the, the two field, or if you're doing a, a CC or a BCC field, you wanna have all those email addresses all at once. Well, what we can do is utilize Microsoft's Power Automate to help us in that process. So what we'll do is jump over to Power Automate and start working from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select there, get my face out of the way, and let's go ahead and get building. So thus far, what I have here for this flow is simply added in a manual trigger. We could do this with a recurrence trigger. Um, you could do this you know, add on a schedule if you like, or just a manual. I wanna go grab all those email addresses that, to, to send an, an email with. What we're gonna do is get all the items from our SharePoint list. So if you're gonna do this from Excel, it's list rows present in an Excel table or, or get uh, all the rows on a Dataverse table or just think about the different connectors you're using. What I've done is I've actually filtered this down to order it by only returning the 10 most recent. So I'm doing that by ID in a descending order there. So it's the most recent, the 10 most recent on that list in this case and then um, ordering them by ID. Now you can order it by any other column. I've just chosen to order by ID in this case. And to get ourselves working within our uh, flow here, the next step that I wanna do, I'm gonna add a step here, is to initialize a variable. And what we'll do is we'll use this variable as our uh, way to store those email addresses. So we're gonna go ahead and create a, a variable here with initialize variable. And this one we'll call this our var email array, okay? Because we are gonna create an array, a list of email addresses. We'll make sure that this type is an array and we're gonna leave the value blank because what we'll do is we'll actually add in those email addresses as we go ahead and, and, and make it. So the, the very next step is if you wanna take a look at our source here is we need to capture all of these email addresses here and put them together on a single line, right? A string, if you will, um, for this array. Now what we can do is we can utilize an action here within Power Automate called append to array. It's a variable action. But what we want is to take every single one of those email addresses to add in here. So prior to doing that, what we need is an apply to each. And what the apply to each looping action allows us to do is to apply the logic to each one of those rows that we wanna work with. So we're gonna to apply to each here using our value list of items, all of the items from that SharePoint table, okay, that we've gotten the items from. And then the action we want to uh, apply this logic to, okay, is going to be another variable but this time it's gonna be our append to array variable. Okay, so we're gonna take all those individual values and create an array for them. 
So now because we set up our initialized variable as an array data type, we will now be able to see that variable here in our append to array variable action. Now, what do we want to append to that array? Well, we want to take all of the email addresses. So that's what we're going to pass through there is for our dynamic content from our table, the email column there, we're going to pass that in there and we're going to use that. So every time it loops over, it's going to now grab that single in email value that we can utilize. Now, the next step for us to take all those email addresses and put them together as a single array is we need to add another action outside of the loop that will join together all of those individual values. So we are going to simply search for the join operator or the join action. Okay, that is a data operation. Okay, you could utilize this in your workflow definition language if you're doing it in an expression, but it is just as easy to do here with this action. And so now what do we want to join? Well, we want to take all of the options that have come from our append to variable, right? Everything that we've now iterated over here, and we want to join all of these email addresses with that semicolon that we can utilize inside of our to field. So we're gonna pass through our email array, so all of those individual items, and then we're gonna join them, in this case right here, with a semicolon and a space. Now it's important here, make that space in there as you pass it in so we have an individual space between each of those email addresses. So it gets passed through nice and neatly into our, our email that we're trying to write. So semicolon space, okay, so we're joining those together. And now that we have that created, what we can do is set up our email. Now what I'm gonna do is because my email addresses are fictitious, I just came up with these off the top of my head, instead of setting this up into the to field of my send an email, I will just um, put that into the body so you can see how all of them are returned um, so we can and, you know, show that this is actually working. All right, so I'll send this email to myself and we'll put in our test for email recipient list in the body here. Take a look at this list of emails and then we'll put in the output from the join. So taking a look at our steps here, we're getting all of the items from our list. We're then creating a variable, an array that we're setting up okay, for this variable. So we're creating essentially a blank list here. And then we're gonna take through with our apply to each, we're gonna append all of those individual fields here, every single one of these using a apply to each, taking those individual values, using our append to our array variable, and then joining them all together with our join here with a semicolon and a space. And then we can utilize that output inside of our email. And again, if we wanted to pass that through our to field, we could do that. In this case, these are again, as I mentioned, fictitious, so we're not gonna use it this time. But we're gonna go ahead and test this and see what we get. All right, our flow's running. It's now going ahead and appending all of those to that array and it should be there it is it is done and here you have it there is our email that i've just received i'm going to bump that up a little bit you can see there's the email i've generated with all of those email addresses separated by a semicolon if i wanted to add that into the to field that would it would be very easily added in you can see because of the join after each individual individual values, we have that semicolon in space, which means we can add that in anywhere inside of our email and it will generate the email in the exact format that we want to see here within Power Automate. Well, thanks so much for joining me here again, taking a look at how we can utilize Power Automate, help solve some of these problems we tend to get within Power Automate. This time, taking a look at how we can generate an email recipient list coming from any data source that we may have. As long as we know how to get that data, we can go ahead and formulate all of those values to be able to utilize within our flow. Stay tuned for future videos here, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below to keep getting all the amazing content that we're putting out here from Pragmatic Works. See you next time.